Good morning, guys, and welcome to another pre-recorded lecture on LOS 1043, aka RFBT2. And we are under midterms PDIC, or the Philippine Deposit Insurance Corporation Act. Yesterday, we have talked about the basics of PDIC, as well as the mandates of the PDIC, and the basics on the determination of PDIC insured deposits. We have also talked about what type of deposits are insured by the PDIC and what type of uh, items are not um, under the coverage of the PDIC. And now we will continue with our discussion. Now, yesterday, we, will, we have talked about the determination of um, the amounts insured for both an individual um, account holder and joint account holder. Now, we will talk about a comprehensive rule for individuals who hold both a joint and an individual account in the same bank. So this is an example where um, an individual not only has a uh, his or her own separate account as an individual in a bank, and that at the same bank as well, he holds a joint account with another person. So dalawa ho ang kanyang bank account, isang joint at isang individual. Ngayon ho, um, ang rule po ni PDIC doon ay ito. They will, be, um, they will be insured and they shall be covered separately. Okay, they shall be covered separately. Therefore, for individuals with both a joint and an individual account, ho, ang maximum coverage po natin ay 1 million pesos. Of course, it's still subject to the rules and regulations na napag-usapan natin for an individual account and a joint account uh, yesterday. Now, the basic example would be such that if Cruella holds a joint account with the Baroness, and Cruella also has an individual account at the same bank, then Cruella's share on the joint account and her individual account shall be separately insured. So my insurance po na maximum na 500,000 yung individual account ni Cruella and as well as the um, share of Cruella in the joint account with the Baroness. I also uh, insured separately at a maximum of 500,000. This is an example of that. So this is actually a combination of um, a combination of what we have discussed yesterday as regards um, interest for buy etc. accounts that or those are individual accounts, and of course our discussion on joint accounts and how to apply the rule for um, individuals and joint accounts. Okay, individual accounts and or uh, individual depositors which hold both individual and joint accounts. Now we have the following items and our requirement is to determine the insurable deposit of Miranda and Andrea. So the account name are as follows. We have the savings account of Miranda Priestley as an individual, so amounting to 600,000. Next, we have an account uh, of Miranda Priestley in trust for Andrea Sachs, which is an FCDU account amounting to 400,000. Miranda Priestley and Emily Charlton, this is an example of a joint account that is a demand deposit worth 400,000. And lastly, we have Miranda Priestley or Andrea Sachs, which is a time deposit at a balance of 700,000. Again, Miranda Priestley or Andrea Sachs is also a joint account. Now, how do we determine the insurance or insurable deposit of Miranda and Andrea? So let's take a look at the answer. Unahin mo po natin yung individual account ni Miranda Priestley. As mentioned a while back, okay, as mentioned basically, kapag ho individual account yan, it will be insured at a maximum of 500,000 pesos. Now, since um, this is an individual account, not a joint account, the 600,000 is attributable solely on Miranda Priestley and no one else. Okay? So yung 600,000 huna yon ay buong buo na kay Miranda Priestley at wala po siyang kahati doon. And therefore, 
Okay, upon insurance or upon closure, the Philippine Deposit Insurance Corporation will um, bestow upon Miranda Priestley only a maximum of 500,000 from this individual deposit. Reason being is that yun yung maximum na um, insurance coverage natin. So yung 600,000 or yung excess po nung um, 500,000, which is in this case 100,000 pesos, will be uninsured. Okay, it is a loss on part of Miranda Priestley. Pero later on, mapag-uusapan natin kung saan nga ba napupunta yung mga uninsured deposits ni um, depositor in the event of a liquidation. In the event of a liquidation, saan mapupunta yung uninsured deposit? Kasi meron pa rin pong pakinabang yun. Meron pa rin pong pakinabang yun. Next, we have Miranda Priestley in trust for Andrea Sachs. Okay? Miranda Priestley in trust for Andrea Sachs. Ngayon, ang deposit po niya ay 400,000. And um, as mentioned um, in our discussion yesterday, a uh, trust for account is also an example of an individual account where kapag in trust for sino ang may ano um, sino ang may sino ang considered na depositor for an in trust for account, yung agent. Okay? Yung I mean yung trustee. Trustee meaning yung um, late yung ano kung sino yung second name doon sa account name siya yung trustee and yung unang name kasi like in this case MPITFAS or Miranda Priestley in trust for AS yung first name po ay um yung kay Miranda Priestley which is the first name appearing in the account name is the trustor okay or the trust okay trustor <laughs> May word ba na trustor? Okay, and then yung ne next name is yung si Andrea Sachs, the trustee. Okay, the trustee. In this case, si Andrea Sachs po yung trustee and the trustee is considered to be the depositor. Okay, the trustee is considered to be the depositor. And therefore, yung 400,000 po na yun ay attributable solely on Andrea and not on Miranda. Okay, yung 400,000 po na yun will be insured Okay, as an individual account of Andrea Sachs. Therefore, um, Andrea Sachs will have an insured deposit of the entire 400,000 kasi pasok naman po siya doon sa 500,000 um, coverage limit ng PDIC. Ayan. So we have so far identified um, two account names. Okay. Next, we have MP and EC. This is obviously a joint account already. Okay, This is obviously a joint account account already. Now, in the absence of, again, a deposit sharing agreement, ano yung gagamitin natin? It would be an equal share. Tama ba? So, therefore, Miranda Priestley and Emily Charlton shall both be entitled for a 200,000 split on the de total deposit balance of 400,000. Therefore, tig 200,000 po si um, Miranda Priestley and uh, Emily Charlton. Okay? Now, for insurance purposes, of course, si Emily Charlton um, will be insured at a, max, uh, at a 200,000 pesos kasi pasok nga din siya sa um, deposit uh, limit natin or yung insurance limit natin from the PDIC. And Miranda will also be separately insured um, within the 200,000 pesos. So yung, uh, it is within the deposit limit or uh, insurance limit na 500K. So... Um, may insure pa rin ho si Miranda ng 200,000. Now take note, take note, kung mapapansin nyo, insured na si Miranda Priestley doon sa individual deposits niya na 500,000. Supposedly, di ba, supposedly, yung 500,000 na it's the end of the game already. Wala na siyang makukuhang insurance. However, given the fact that she still owns split deposits or uh, split deposits to like joint deposits, okay, the joint deposit shall be insured separately as to that of the individual deposits that Miranda Priestley has. So aside from the 500,000 na makukuha niya doon sa deposit niya sa, as an individual, okay, doon sa unang item natin, si Miranda ay makakakuha din ng um, insurance on both of the joint accounts that she owns okay, on the same bank. Okay? So aside from the 500,000, Miranda will also be entitled to the share of 200,000 on the um, split from the joint deposit na 400,000. And lastly, we have another joint account. Again, this is owned by Miranda Priestley and um, Andrea Sachs, amounting to 700,000. 
So kapag i-split po natin yan, we have 350,000 each, syempre. So ngayon, dito na papasok yung limit natin. Dito na papasok yung limit natin. Kasi di ba ang total limit natin per share or total limit natin per type would be 500,000. Na-exhaust na po ni Miranda Priestley yung 500,000 niya doon sa individual account niya. Okay? And then, um, may 200,000 na rin siyang insured um, for, on the point of view of a joint account. So for the rest of the joint account na 350,000, okay, exhaust na lang natin yung 500K, magiging 300,000 na lang ho ang ating insured deposit. So sa suma total, ang insured deposits po ni Miranda Priestley would be the 500,000 individual account that she has. Okay, the 200,000 from the joint deposit with um, Emily Charlton and the 300,000 um, from the maximum insurance that she has with the um, joint deposit with Andrea Sachs, na 300,000, totaling 1 million pesos. Ngayon, in the event na may isa pang um, individual deposit, si Miranda Priestley, for example, say... Um, Anong tawag dito? Andrea Sachs for the account of Miranda Priestley. Ganon, di ba? So kapag for the account of si Miranda Priestley po, on that particular case, ang depositor. Okay? So since Miranda Priestley is the depositor and it is considered an individual account, wala na ho siyang insurance kasi nga na-exhaust na po niya yon buong-buo sa 500,000 na individual deposit niya. Okay? So ganun ho yun. That's how it works. Okay? Yan. So ang total ni Miranda ho ay 1 million. So kapag tatanungin sa quiz or sa exam, magkano ang total or maximum uh, allowable insurance for um, a depositor that holds both a joint and an individual account? Ang magiging sagot po ninyo ay 1 million pesos. 1 million pesos. But for um, those that only anong tawag dito? That only hold either an individual account or a joint account only, Okay, uh, 500,000. And take note, yung example din natin or yung um, postulate din natin kahapon na kapag different banks yan, those are insured on a per bank basis. So one bank, one insurance coverage. Okay. So we have settled Miranda. Now we have Andrea as well. So si Andrea, um, aside from having an individual account na 400,000, magiging insured din ho siya doon sa joint account niya na amounting to 350,000 ang kanyang share. So in this case, 400,000 plus 350K, ang total coverage po ni Andrea or ang total insured deposits po ni Andrea is 750,000. Okay, 750,000. Now at this point, if you have any questions, go ahead and do so and uh, make a chat on the GC or anywhere else. And let's pause for a while. You may pause this video as well for you to better understand um, the concepts of this example. You may forward and you may go back and take a screenshot of this. So wait lang. I'll give you 10 seconds to make a screenshot of this one. And also 10 seconds to screenshot this one. And you're also allowed to pause if you need to internalize everything that we have discussed. Now that we are settled, we will go to our next topic. Now, this highlights the procedures for the PDIC um, in Settling deposit claims or insurance claims. Now, <clears throat> when will PDIC determine the amount of insured deposits? Only during the actual takeover of the closed bank. Take note, guys, na si PDIC ay may investigative and examination powers po siya. Okay? May, may investigative and examination power po siya. And um, PDIC also retains the right and the responsibility to receive closed banks. So if may mga magsasarang banko, si PDIC po ang bahalang mamang, mga siwa 
okay, mga siwa sa pagsasara nung banko na yon. And PDIC will as well take over the liquidation process. So, it is very much proper na um, sakalang madedetermine yung amount ng insured deposits kung talagang nag-take over na si PDIC doon sa actual closure and liquidation of the bank. Paano, na, paano nga naman i-determine ni PDIC ang amount ng claim ng bawat depositor kung hindi pa naman uh, nangangasiwa si PDIC doon sa actual na liquidation operation ni bank? Okay? Since sakalang naman magkakaroon ng power si PDIC to investigate and to examine and to liquidate, the moment na i-receive na niya yung closed bank for actual takeover. Okay, so dun ho, dun ho nangyayari yung determination of actual and insured deposits. Ngayon ho, ang gagawin ho ni PDIC, once na determine na niya ho ang mga um, depositors na mayroong uh, unpaid balances or may mga un, uh, may mga deposits na hinahawakan pa sa banko, okay? And those are all insured, syempre, 'di ba? Unless of course it's um it is not insured uh, sa mata ng batas as um as manifested by those uh, exemptions or those um, items that were not covered na diniscuss natin yesterday, uh, yung mga ano, yung ang gagawin ho ni PDIC is after the determination of such insured deposits as well as the entire amount of the deposits. So, ang gagawin ho niyan, gagawa, gagawa si PDIC ng isang listahan ng mga depositors ni banko and of course yung corresponding deposits that will be insured by the PDIC yung actual amount ho ngayon ang gagawin ho ni PDIC PDIC will give notice of course notice is very much necessary syempre for the knowledge and for um the information not just of the persons that are or not just for the depositors but also for the general public which is why notice will be done via two things. Two things po, dalawang notice po ang mangyayari. Una, notice for the depositors. Okay? Notice for the depos for the depositors, aka the personal notice. So of course, the PDIC will personally notify the depositors individually. Okay, ino notify nila na ah okay. Um hello, good morning, Mr. Depositor. Um good morning, Mr. Depositor. In uh uh, informing you that uh, the bank where you have um, the bank where you have put your deposit or where you have an outstanding deposit um, has already been closed and is now being took over by the PDIC and the PDIC therefore is um, is informing you that you have an insured deposit balance uh, which amounts to choo 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 okay so ino notify po yung mga um, depositors ng uh, sa, sa closure ng banko and of course the amount of their corresponding deposits personal notice po syempre for for the convenience na rin of the and for the notice na rin of the depositors but personal notice is not enough it is also proper that there should also be a notice to the public okay to the public a notice via the public or notice to the public is usually done via a newspaper. Okay, yung newspaper po na yun ay dapat of general circulation. Okay, ang general circulation um, papers po like mga Manila, uh, wait lang, Philippine Daily Inquirer, Philippine Star, yun yan, di ba? Manila Bulletin, um, may mga ano, may mga local, may mga local uh, newspapers din uh, here in Tugigaraw. But I think ano, I think nagbago na rin yung ano, yung convention on when on where on how to make notice kasi because of the prevalence of technology that um technology is likewise being ano, likewise being used as well to give notice to the public especially of a closed bank. Okay? Yung public notice po na to is informing the public that a bank has closed in a particular location as well as yung um as well as yung mga ano yung mga uh, eligible depositors that are eligible to claim for uh, insurance okay ngayon ang ang primary ano po ang primary purpose po ng public notice is to give warning to the public to the general public na okay um hello public 
nagsara na ho ang bank na to, okay? It is informing the public that the bank has already been closed para at least, di ba, ma-inform ang public and maiwasan yung public na makipag-transact sa bank na to and under <clears throat> normal banking receivership operation. So, may iwasan ng future deposits, may iwasan ng future financial transactions, banking transactions kasi nga insolvent na si bank at hindi na siya at hindi na niya kayang i-sustain pa ang operations. So, um, kailangan ma-inform si public about this matter para maiwasan ang future problems. Okay, para maiwasan ng future problems. So, there are two types of notice. Personal notice directly to the depositor and public notice uh, given um, via a newspaper to the general um, population and general community where the bank is located. Ayan. So, next we have um, the COD holders. COD also known as Certificate of Deposits. Okay, Certificate of Deposits. Ang certificate of deposits po kasi these are like ano lang parang um, an evidence uh, an evidence that an evidence that a depositor holds a deposit inside the bank an evidence that a depositor holds a deposit inside the bank and sometimes ang COD kasi negotiable siya negotiable siya in a sense na um pwede siyang i-transfer from one person to another ngayon the danger of this is that paano kung Um, na i na i ano to paano kung na i ano tawag dito paano kung na i negotiate to sa ibang ano uh, paano kung na i negotiate ito sa isang or sa ibang um, ibang holder aside from the um, deposit holder talaga so say for example si deposit holder may COD siya yung COD ho na yon itransfer niya i negotiate niya sa ibang tao Okay, ini-negotiate niya sa ibang tao. Ngayon, yung ibang taong yon na naka-receive nung certificate of deposit, hindi niya pwedeng i-purport kay PDIC na sa kanya yung deposit na nasa bangko unless nakalagay ho sa bangko na na-negotiate po talaga sa kanya at siya yung duly um, certified holder. Okay, duly certified order. So it works like this way. Ako may may ano may deposit ako kay BPI and in return BPI has given me a certificate of deposit to evidence my cert, uh, to evidence my deposit in BPI ngayon ako naman bilang pambayad ko sa isang utang ko ibin, ibinayad ko ito at ini-negotiate ko ito in exchange for my liability to my friend okay si friend ngayon syempre in the event of the closure nalaman niya na may closure Okay and then syempre insured yung liability or insured yung um, deposit ko under PDIC. So si friend pumunta ngayon kay um, bank. Okay, present niya yung certificate of deposit without him knowing na hindi ko pa pala nasabi kay bank ko na nai-endorse ko na yung um, ano na i-endorse ko na at na-negotiate ko na yung um, certificate of deposit. Okay, in that event, in that event Uh, hindi po certified holder si ano although siya yung hold si friend although siya yung holder uh, hindi po siya i-recognize ng PDIC sino din ho ang makakatanggap ng deposit ako pa rin okay ako pa rin pero in the event na nai-endorse ko siya ng maayos and nakalagay naman ho sa bangko okay na, na notify naman si bangko at na-certify ni bangko na si friend na ngayon ang Um, rightful holder no um, certificate of deposit na yon therefore okay PDIC will acknowledge that fact okay PDIC will acknowledge such fact Ayan. baliktad <clears throat> okay napagbaliktad natin <laughs> hindi, hindi pala siya baliktad. Okay lang pala. So now, we go to the claim. We go to the claim. Ano naman itong claim? Claim from its term, di ba? From, from, the, from the term itself. A claim, okay, is a rightful um, declaration. <clears throat> a rightful declaration that you are exercising your right to avail of the um, insurance. Okay, it is an, it is, a formal declaration on your part as the depositor to um to exercise your right to accept the insurance okay to accept the insurance yun yung claim 
Ngayon, yung claim po na yon ay dapat i-file during the claims settlement period as announced. So the moment na the moment na ano, the moment na inannounce na ni PDIC na ah okay, we have already settled and we have already took we have already taken over the closed bank and we have already finished the processes that will be that we will be needing for insurance claims. Now, therefore, to the general public, informing you that we are now opening the public and we are now opening the floor for any claims. Okay, so upon announcement, ni PDIC ng ganon, the claim settlement period will already commence. The claims settlement period will already commence. So it, it, it is at this point that the depositing public, especially the depositors of the closed bank, can now okay, make claims um, to the closed bank or against PDIC for their deposits in the closed bank. Ayan. So sino yung mga required na mag-claim? Sino yung mga required na mag-claim? Una, yung mga depositors na may accounts of more than 100,000. So yung mga large accounts po uh, that are exceeding 100,000 pesos, kailangan ho nilang mag-claim. Required po silang mag-claim. Okay? Required, requirement po ang mag-claim for depositors with valid accounts of more than 100,000. Next, we also have depositors with outstanding bank obligation. So regardless of the amount of your um, claim or regardless of the amount of your deposits, say um, below 100,000 man yan or even 50,000 pesos, pero may outstanding obligation ka kay banko. So that may be in a form of a short-term loan okay, or kumbaga parang uh, liability, ganyan, talaga like, um, accounts payable, notes notes payable, ganyan, uh, kailangan mo muna yung isettle with the PDIC. Kailangan mo muna isettle yun with the PDIC. And therefore, okay, you should also write a claim. Okay, you should also write a claim. And next, depositors who fail to update address via the mailing address update form or the MAUF. MAUF tuloy. The MOF. Okay, kasi ano po? Kasi, Wala namang problema kung yung address mo pareho pa rin. Wala namang problema kung yung address mo pareho pa rin. Pero in the event that you have changed uh, your address or you have siguro updated your contact information, ganyan, kailangan mong um, i-accomplish itong MAUF. Itong MAUF po na to, available po sa PDIC website. And kailangan mong ibigay ni depositor yung MAUF doon sa um doon sa ano doon sa PDIC officer in charge of the bank closure. Okay? Ang ang purpose lang talaga po ng MAUF is for PDIC to be updated on how to contact you for your claim, how to um send your claim via mail kasi ganun ganun pa rin po kasi talaga ang ginagawa nila eh. Via mail pa rin po yung mga um certificate of deposits certificate of transfers ganyan um, money orders etc okay uh, hindi hindi po kasi siya minsan electronic but i i just don't know uh, at this point kung may mga electronic means na rin po si PDIC of paying um deposit insurances but for um but during that time during those times na wala pa talagang electronic commerce dito sa Pilipinas um, kailangan kailangan talaga na updated ang PDIC doon sa mailing address update form. Okay? So i-update mo as a depositor yung contact information mo or your address. Okay? Now in the event that you failed um, to update your address via the MAUF, okay? Kailangan mo nang mag-file ng claim. Kailangan mo nang mag-file ng claim. Okay, number four, depositors who, main, who, who maintain accounts under the name of a business entity. So kapag ho yung account ninyo or kung yung account na hawak ninyo ay hindi sa inyo, ngunit nakapangalan ho siya sa business ninyo, although yun nga, um, yun nga ikaw, ang may hawak, ikaw ang may hawak at ikaw ang may pakinabang but then again, nakapangalan siya sa business mo at hindi sa iyo, okay, kailangan mong mag-file ng claim. 
Okay, kailangan mo ring mag-file ng claim. Gaya ng example natin yesterday, kung maalala nyo, yung kay... Um, wait lang. Ito, yung Mr. Jones's store. Okay? Yun yung account name, eh, Mr. Jones's store. So, kailangan pong mag-file ni Mr. Jones ng um, claim in behalf of the store um, na nakapangalan doon sa uh, account, the bank account na yun. And lastly, deposits that are not eligible for early payment as determined by the PDIC. Sadly, wala, wala akong makitang mga examples and jurisprudence for um, examples of non-eligibility for early payment. Ang alam ko lang ho, PDIC determines what is um, eligible or deposits that are eligible for early payment or those that are yet to be withheld. Okay, yet to be withheld and that are um, that should not be uh, immediately that should not be immediately paid at an early time. Okay, si PDIC po. So nasa discretion po ni PDIC. Si PDIC po ang nagdedetermine nito. Okay? Yan. Now, um, who should sign the claim? Who should sign the claim? Sino yung uh, nagpipirma or sino yung um, Sino yung kailangan pumirma ng claim? So upon making a claim, yung claim ho na yun, nandun ho yung amount of deposit, yung address mo, contact details mo, bank account mo if meron, and of course, naka-attach po dapat sa claim yung mga um, proof of deposit, syempre. Okay? Or minsan, kahit hindi na kailangan ng proof of deposit, like um, ang kailangan lang siguro would be yung proof of identity, Okay, as long as na-determine talaga ni PDIC na meron ka nga talagang um, insurance claim um, for your deposit doon sa banko na yon. So proof of identity lang minsan ang kailangan. Okay, that's the general rule. And it should be attached doon sa claim and the claim will include um, at least the following. The deposit, uh, the deposit type, the deposit account name, account number, um, the amount of deposit, uh, contact details and a formal request that you are signifying your um, right to claim for an insurance uh, over your deposit. Yun ho yung claim. And of course, the claim should be signed by the, ge the general rule, which is the depositor. <laughs> okay? Si depositor po, generally, syempre, di ba, ang kailangang mag-sign ng claim. Diba? Siyempre, kung sino yung may hawak ng deposit, siya dapat ang mag-claim and therefore, siya dapat ang mag-sign. Logically speaking, diba? <laughs> okay, pero may mga exemptions po tayo dyan. Depende ho, dun sa exemptions natin. Okay? Dun po sa exemptions natin. May nakalimutan na akong ilagay doon sa PowerPoint, which is hindi nakalagay dito. Ilalagay na lang natin. Okay? Ilalagay na lang natin. Um... Ilalagay na lang natin as a, paano ba? Wait lang. Saglit lang. Saglit lang to. Saglit lang ito. Ayan. So, ano ba sila? Ayan. O, oh, di ba? Bilis. <laughs> okay. So, let's go back to our current slide. Ayan. So, the general rule, mga kaibigan, is the depositor should sign the claim. However, if the deposit was made by a minor, okay? So, yung, yung deposit na yon, ang holder ng deposit na yon would be um, a person who is below 18 years old oh, or which is considered in our case here in the Philippines as a minor, Okay? Ang magsasign ho ay hindi si depositor, hindi si minor, kundi yung parent or guardian. Okay? Yung parent or authorized guardian ni minor. Okay? Yung parent or authorized guardian ni minor. Sila ho ang magsasign nung claim. Paano naman po pag for the buy accounts? So yung mga pair, uh, yung mga ano, yung mga uh, ano tawag dito? Uh, principal agent relationships, ba? Mga principal agent relationships. Ang magsasign po ng buy account ay yung agent. Okay? Si agent ho. Uh, and then, for the trust accounts naman, yung mga in-trust for or ITF, ang mga magsasign naman po nung claim ay si trustee. Kasi nga sila yung mga benefactors eh. Si agent ang benefactor for a buy account. Si trustee naman ang benefactor for a 
joint or for a trust account. So therefore, since sila yung may benefit, sila yung may benefit, syempre naturally sila yung magsa-sign ng claim. While on the other hand, yung claim kasi for a minor, hindi siya pwede kasi they are not yet um, entitled to give consent, di ba? Uh, Napag-usapan na natin yan sa law on obligations and contracts that a minor um, does not have the capacity yet to make consent. Di ba? Yun yung general rule. So, um, therefore, the consent should be made in behalf of the minor by the parent or by the guardian. Okay, lastly, of course, we have the joint account. So kung joint account man po yan, dapat ho ang magsasign ng claim ay yung lahat ng mga joint depositor. So kung dalawa man sila, dalawa dapat ang signature na magpakita sa claim. Kung tatlo or apat, then tatlo or apat na signatures din ang makikita dapat sa claim. Okay, so now that we have discussed who or um, what the claim contents, who are required to file the claim, and who are um, who who need to sign the claim. Okay, now pupunta na tayo sa period of filing the claim. But before that, I have to un I have to share to you guys that um, there are certain instances. Okay, there are certain instances. Although hindi ko siya nilagay dito sa ating PowerPoint, there are certain instances in which hindi na natin kailangang magfile ng claim. Sino yung mga yon? Okay, sino yung mga yon? Yung mga hindi na required na mag-file ng claim. Okay? Ang hindi na required mag-file ng claim, una, yung mga um, depositors na ang account nila ay less than 100,000. Okay? Or 100,000 and below pala, I should say. So, yung mga within 100,000 lang, including 100,000, Okay, hindi na sila am um, required na mag-claim as long as as long as wala silang outstanding bank obligations and as long as they are updated in their contact details and addresses. So kapag updated naman ho yung contact details and addresses nila, um hindi na yun problema. But then again, if they are not updated, simple lang, magano lang sila, magbigay lang sila ng mouth. Okay, update lang nila ulit yung um, contact information nila via the mouth. And ibibigay yung mouth na ito doon sa PDIC officer that is in charge of the closed bank. Okay, ibibigay po ito personally or via mail, whichever um, is convenient on the point of view of the depositor. Okay, so kapag nakaka-accomplish po yung tatlong requisites na ito where um, within 100,000 lang ho yung um, valid account, walang outstanding bank obligations and updated ho yung address and contact information natin via MOF. Okay? Kapag na-meet po yung tatlong yon, then therefore the depositor shall not be required to file a claim. Okay? Hindi na po siya kailangan mag-file ng claim. Inunotify na lang po siya agad ng PDIC on how to um ano tawag dito? On how to claim, I mean on how to claim, on how to receive uh, or how to uh, get the payment of the deposit insurance. Okay? Uh, madalas noon, ang ginagamit is yung postal money order. Okay? Yung postal money order, which means that it is like, ano, parang, um, kumbaga parang cheque lang din siya, but uh, it is in a form of a letter. Or, anong tawag dito? Parang ang hirap i-ano eh. Ang hirap i- ang hirap i-explain. Kasi ano, ang uh, ang, may, may example akong ano, may, may example yun sa mga libro ng negotiable instruments pero ang hirap niyang ni-explain kasi nga uh, hindi, hindi, hindi pa tayo nakakakita ng ganun. Hindi na kasi uso ang money orders. Okay? Kasi ngayon, we are in the world of e-commerce na talaga. So but um, before, okay, before the reason why kinakailangan ng mouth or the mailing address update form is because dito talaga directly minimail Okay, pinapadala po talaga via mail yung postal money order. Yung money order po na yun is an order um, directing a certain bank to um, ano tawag dito? To uh, to disburse a particular amount as um, benefit to the depositor. So, parang kung meron ako nun, say ako yung depositor na may insured claim, 
pupunta ako kay BPI for example or kung saan man ako bin, uh, saan man ako um ininstruct ng PDIC to get the check sa Land Bank for example um, pupunta ako sa Land Bank and then yung order na yon ang sinasabi lang niya kay Land Bank ah okay Land Bank I authorize you to um disburse this particular amount to this person which is ako okay so ganun ho yung um ganun ho yung essence ng money order. Parang check lang din siya kung tutuusin, kung makikita nyo. Okay? So, yun ho yung um, kagandahan ng mga deposits uh, below or within 100,000 pesos na walang outstanding obligation and updated ang address via the mailing address update form. Okay? Um, the reason being kung bakit may mga exemption na ganito for um, small deposits is of course for convenience, di ba? Maliit lang nga lang na deposit, di ba? Parang for the government, for the point of view of the government, kayang-kayang bayaran to na if it's below 100,000. So, ano pa yung point na magkakandara pa si depositor to claim a deposit at this uh, at this low amount, di ba? So, PDIC has devised this um, exemption for small depositors. Okay, for small depositors. Now, um, meron ho tayong prescribed period on filing and enforcing the claim. So nasabi natin kanina, where, when will the period to file commence? So magko-commence po ang period of filing kapag may formal announcement na from the PDIC. Okay, kapag may formal announcement na from the PDIC, doon mag start yung filing period. At ano yung filing period natin? Two years from the actual takeover of the bank. So upon takeover, dun, dun mag announce si um, PDIC that they have taken, taken over the bank and they have um, uh, they have control of their liquidation operations and now there are the filing uh, period shall be open. Okay, yeah, announce yun ni PDIC. And at that moment, okay, at that moment, yung two years may magsisimula na. Okay, ay magsisimula na. Okay? Now, assuming nakapag-file tayo within two years, ilang years naman, bago natin, uh, I mean, ilang years naman, yung uh, eligible time natin for us to enforce the claim. So after filing the claim, May two years po tayo para i-execute yung claim na yon. May two years po tayo af para i-execute yung claim na yon. So after filing, may two years na naman po. Okay? So maximum of four years. So if na if talagang inexhaust mo yung two years, go. And then inexhaust mo na naman yung two years, mag-antay for enforcing the claim, go. Okay? Basta wag ka lang lumagpas, di ba? Ayan. So yun ho yung um, period to file and period period to enforce claim. Ayan. Now, PDIC may require a proof of claim. Ano ho yung tinatawag nating proof of claim? Ito po yung mga ano, ito po yung mga, ito po yung prerogative ni PDIC to ensure that the depositor really is in good faith and talagang may uh, talagang trusted depositor siya na may deposit sa banko. Okay? Um, generally, this happens kapag ano kapag uh, kapag hindi naman siya usual na depositor dun sa bank. So kailangan lang siguro ng um, photocopy ng mga uh, identification cards, government issued IDs, photocopy ng uh, ATM card, ganon. Uh, <laughs> and of course, um, anong tawag dito? And passbook if meron, okay. Now, in the event na hindi satisfied si PDIC doon sa proof of claim na binigay ni depositor, okay, pwedeng gawin ni PDIC to let the courts decide. Okay, so final court determination ho ang mangyayari if hindi pa rin po um hindi pa rin po ano, parang satisfied si PDIC doon sa proof na binigay ng isang depositor sa kanila. Okay? Now, Ano po yung ano ano po yung consequence kung hindi natin na file at hindi natin na enforce yung claim natin. So let's say naglapse na yung 2 years. Okay, naglapse yung 2 years tapos hindi natin nagawang i-claim yung deposits. Okay? Or nakapag-file nga tayo pero hindi natin na enforce um in the span of 2 years tapos naglapse na rin yung 2 years na yon. Ano yung mga magiging consequence nun? Una, 
Okay? The depositor is barred from its rights against the PDIC. Okay? Um, the depositor will be barred from the right from its rights against PDIC. So basically, wala nang ay wala na siyang parang right against PDIC. Wala na siyang claim against PDIC. And same is true with the banks. Okay? So mawawala yung uh, depositor rights ni depositor against the closed bank already. Kasi later on, um, may later on mapag-uusapan natin yung fact na may right pa rin talaga siya or si depositor doon sa closed bank even after claiming the um, deposit insurance. Take note guys, take note, may right pa rin, may karapatan pa rin ang isang depositor um, after, okay, after, uh, anong tawag dito, after PDIC has already paid the insured deposits of the uh, depositor. Okay, but in this case, if hindi naman nag-file or nag-claim, then the depositor rights against the closed bank shall be revoked. Okay, revocation lang. Parang ano lang din, parang babalik lang din, magre-revert lang din sa depositor yung rights niya na yun. So in the event of a closure, ganyan, okay, uh, in the event of a closure, kung magkano lang talaga yung makaklaim ni um, depositor doon sa liquidation proceeds, ni closed bank hanggang dun lang makuka, ang makukuha niya hanggang dun lang ho ang makukuha niya okay and lastly PDIC is discharged from liability ibig sabihin ho nito okay walang uh, walang ano walang wala nang liability si PDIC kay depositor in short walang mapapala si depositor from the PDIC wala na hong mapapala si depositor kay PDIC. So bahala na siya kung magkano man ang makukuha niya sa close bank in the event that the bank already fully liquidates at may mga liquidation proceeds na mang mangyayari. Okay? Kung mapapansin niyo guys, parang connect pwedeng i-connect ito sa uh, corporate liquidation. Corporate liquidation in the event na um yung ano yung yung deposit insurance or yung deposit na meron ng isang tao or isang depositor sa isang bank may either be fully secured or not fully secured okay fully secured or not fully secured pero in this case in the event na hindi naman nag-file si creditor okay or i mean hindi naman nag-file si depositor um the entire proceeds or the entire um deposit that the depositor has in the closed bank shall be considered unsecured. Unsecured. So kung magkano lang din ang makukuha niya in the year end or in the event of the closure and actual liquidation already, yun na lang yung makaklaim niya as um, insurance, uh, as, um, as a claim or as a liquidation of his or her deposit. Ayan. So mode of payment ho tayo. Paano binabayaran ni PDIC ang um, mga claims ng mga depositors sa bar, uh, sa insurance. It's either via cash, direct direct cash pwede. Okay? Especially kapag mga low value um low value insurance lang naman like yung mga within 100,000 pwedeng uh, bayaran through cash or yung mga within 100s, 200,000s kanyan. Pero kapag mas mataas, ganun, um mas convenient na lang na magtayo or mag mag-open po si PDIC. Okay, mag-open po si PDIC ng panibagong bank in behalf of the depositor. I mean bagong bank tuloy, bagong bank account pala. <laughs> Sorry. Okay? Bagong bank account. So, ang gagawin ni PDIC, mag-e-establish siya or maggagawa siya ng bank account under a new bank, okay? And then, doon sa bank ho na yun, uh, ilalagay yung uh, deposit or yung um, pera that is corresponding to the uh, insurance claim of the depositor. So, say, si depositor may 300,000 claim. Ganyan. Uh, and then, na-acknowledge naman na ito, duly acknowledge naman na ito by the PDIC. Okay? Instead of cash, magpapagawa na lang si PDIC ng bank account, bagong bank account sa BPI, for example, under the name of the um, depositor. 
okay, under the name of the depositor, which is me, for example. So what um, Adrian Anthony Contillo sa BPI account um, at an amount of 300,000. Okay, sa akin na kapangalan, wala akong effort na ginawa, si PDIC ang gumawa in behalf of um, me as the depositor who is insured by the PDIC. Okay, yun ho yung two modes of payment, via cash or via a direct deposit in the new bank. Okay, so yun. And with that, we are um, in the last window or in the last, ano tawag dito? We are in the last slide for PDIC at matatapos na rin natin ang PDIC finally. Okay, so next week, okay, next week, uh, secrecy of bank deposits na tayo. And after secrecy of bank deposits, AMLA. Okay, secrecy of bank deposits, AMLA. Yung AMLA ang medyo madugo, guys. Okay, yung AMLA ang medyo madugo. Itong PDIC, it only entails analysis on the part of uh, problem solving. Okay, so um, later on, ang magiging nature ng quizzes and exams nyo for PDIC would be, uh, ang tawag dito, yung determination of the amount um, insured. Okay, determination of the amount insured. Ayan. So, miscellaneous topics muna tayo. So, yung topic number one natin, PDIC reserves the right to withhold payment. Paano po ito? Okay, paano po ito? Sabi po ng batas, okay, si PDIC may prerogative na um, i-withhold mo na yung payment. Ibig sabihin, may certain amount po na pwedeng hawakan muna ni PDIC bago ibigay kay um, bago ibigay kay deposit holder. So, Say for example, ako, okay, um, may deposit ako na 500,000 sa banko. And then yung bank ngayon nag-close. So naturally, ako naman, 500,000 na makukuha ko, di ba? Okay? Okay, pero sabi ng batas, si PDIC daw po, pwede siyang mag-withhold. Okay? Pwede niyang hindi ibigay lahat sa akin yung 500,000. Okay? Pwede niyang hindi ibigay sa akin lahat yung 500,000. Ano yung dahilan kung bakit? Ano yung requisite for PDIC to withhold payment kung may unpaid liability ako kay banko? So in the event that a depositor has any unpaid liabilities to the bank, okay, uh, mag-withhold si PDIC ng such amount that is um, equal to my obligation to the bank. And sakalang i-re-release ni PDIC yon once nabayaran ko yung obligation ko na yon. Okay? So say for example, say for example, um, anong tawag dito? Uh, ako yung 500,000 ko kanina. Tapos may, may liability din pala ako kay bank on um, um, multi-purpose loan worth 110,000 pesos already with interest. Okay, so ang matatanggap ko lang is yung 500,000 less 110,000. Okay? Ang gagawin ko ni PDIC doon, it's like, kumbaga parang a collateral to my liability. In the event na hindi ko mabayaran yung 110,000, okay, yun ang ipang tatakip ni PDIC doon sa liability ko sa banko. Okay, kaya i-withhold po ni PDIC yon usually. Okay? Ayan, ganun ho siya. Ganun ho yung um, right to withhold payment. Now, second topic is the effect of PDIC's payment of insured deposits to the depositor. Ano daw ho yung, um, ano daw ho yung effect upon payment ni PDIC ng insured deposit ko to the depositor? Ang mangyayari lang ho, yung rights ko sa banko mawawala na. Yung rights ko sa banko as a depositor mawawala na. Kanina ba pupunta yung rights na yon? Kay, uh, kay PDIC na ho. Okay, kay PDIC na ho. It, it was as if, it was as if binayaran ako ni PDIC sa aking insured deposits while at the same time, kung magkano yung amount na binayad niya sa akin, yun ding na ang amount na magiging right niya kay closed bank in the event of a liquidation. Okay? Um, kumbaga, uh, kumbaga, let's say ako, meron akong... Um, meron akong insurance claim na 200,000 kasi yung deposit ko 200,000 doon sa um, Rural Bank of uh, paano ba? Uh, sige, 
Rural Bank of X na lang. Para wala tayong mabanggit na lugar. <laughs> Rural Bank of X. Okay? So si Rural, may, may deposit daw po ako ng 200,000 sa Rural Bank of X. And then covered daw po yun ng EDIC. Ngayon, in the event of the closure of Rural Bank of X, I claimed the 200,000 kay PDIC. So in turn, I got the whole 200,000 and now the PDIC wants uh, the PDIC is now the right holder on my deposit doon sa Rural Bank. So in the event na magkakaroon ng liquidation tapos may liquidating uh, ano tawag dito, may mga liquidation proceeds naman, so may mga excess kasi yung excess po na yon, kung maalala niyo sa corporate liquidation, 'di ba? Yung excess over creditors ganyan um dinidistribute sa Um, shareholders. Ganon din ho sa ano, ganon din ho sa um, banko. Okay? In the event of the liquidation of a bank, uunahin ng mga creditors, syempre, and then yung mga priority creditors like taxes, ganyan. Ayan. Okay? Um, and of uh, employee salaries, ganon. Um, si PDIC na ho ang may uh, ang may hawak doon sa right for any remaining proceeds na pwedeng i-distribute sa akin. But the PDIC already has that right, not me. Okay? So yun ho yung effect ng PDIC's payment of insured deposits to the depositor. And next, we have preference against other credits. Now, um, please take note that uh, the, the payment made by the PDIC is considered a public fund. Okay, public fund po siya. Public nature po siya. Kasi nga, syempre, galing siya sa gobyerno. Eh. Galing siya sa gobyerno. Despite the fact that PDIC is a corporation, but PDIC is actually a GOCC. ba? Diba? Kaya, ano, napaka-prudent na uh, it is considered a public fund. And therefore, uh, in the event of a bank liquidation, si PDIC po ay may preferential rights over any other creditors. Okay, may preferential rights po siya against other credits. And lastly, okay, what what will happen if we um if the PDIC fails to um settle the um insurance within six months. So take note, guys, that PDIC, okay, PDIC has six months to settle a claim. Has six months to settle a claim. So meaning in the event na nakapag-file na ho si um, depositor ng claim at na-enforce na po niya yung claim na yon. Okay? The moment that the um, depositor already filed and enforced the claim, PDIC will have six months to settle the insurance claim. Now, the general rule for failure to do so meaning Um, na failure talaga, okay? May failure talaga on the part of the PDIC, whether it is because of um, abuse of discretion, negligence, bad faith, ganyan. Um, ang mangyayari po ay masasubject po yung mga officers um, ng PDIC into, um, into responsibility for delay. And responsibility for delay on part of the PDIC will cause them to be imprisoned for at least six months to one year. Okay, imprisonment po ang magiging parusa para sa mga um, officers and employees ng PDIC um, as a result of failure to settle the, uh, under the six-month rule if it resulted to um, conviction or bad faith, gross negligence, abuse of discretion. Pero kung ang dahilan naman ng delay is because of resolution of issues like yung dun nga pending um, cases, court um, ano tawag dito, court finality rulings dun sa proof of claim mo, for example, or um, pending settlement of liability, for example, and any other valid reasons that may be deemed uh, justifiable to um extend the settlement requirement or the settlement period beyond six months, then PDIC will not be held responsible for that. Kasi necessary yung mga rason eh. Pero uh, if yun nga, hindi naman necessary yung rason at it, it really just stemmed from bad faith or malice, okay, um, dito na ho mag apply yung um, imprisonment requirement. Okay? So with that, 
we have we have done okay we are done with the PDIC or the Philippine Deposit Insurance Corporation o di ba ang ganda bongga ayan so the entire PDIC just revolves around the following topics okay just revolves around the following topics number one, okay you need to understand okay we need to understand who are not entitled to PDIC who are entitled to PDIC Okay, the insurance limit and the highlight of PDIC, which is the computation of the amount due. So please take note, guys, that we need to um, we need to uh, memorize by heart the rules in determining the amount that is to be insured by the PDIC, whether it be an individual insurance or I mean an individual deposit a joint deposit or both a joint and an individual deposit. Okay, don't worry guys, I upload ko na ito as soon as possible doon sa LMS natin for you to have a copy. Okay, for you to have a copy. Ayan. So with that then, we end our discussion for today. And I would also um, like to share with you that you can ask anything any questions related to our topic in PDIC under the following um, communication medium via my email at work, my email at my master's degree, my personal email, or my phone number. You can also ask me via Facebook Messenger. Um, I prefer um, if you ask via the GC para at least masagutan natin siya together. Okay? As one, um, as one loss 1043 community. So with that, thank you very much for um, tuning in and listening to this discussion. Once again, have a nice day. Goodbye.